Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Removed Heart of Jane Seymour The third wife of Henry VIII is considered by some to have been his biggest love. The six-wifed king was buried with Jane Seymour following his death inside of St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. But Jane Seymour had a tragic life which was cut short following giving birth to the son, Henry VIII greatly wished for, and his successor, Edward VI. Jane spent the last few months of her life at Hampton Court Palace, a huge and lavish Tudor palace, where she would give birth, but also spent her confinement before. Despite being considered to have been different to Henry's other wives, she did have royal blood and was a descendant of Edward III, meaning she was also fifth cousins with Henry VIII, her husband. Following her death, she was embalmed and her heart was removed and then it was allegedly buried in a different place from her body. And it's believed that Jane Seymour's heart never left the palace where she gave birth and also died. What is the story of her heart? Jane Seymour was not as highly educated as the king's first and second wives, and she could only read and write a little bit, but she was great at domestic jobs and household management. She was also great at needlework, but she became a maid of honour at the royal court of Catherine of Aragon, and she also then went to serve Anne Boleyn, Henry's second wife. And it was here where she caught the attention and eye of Henry VIII. The king became known for looking for mistresses and also potential future wives in the close attendance of his wives. And this is what happened with Jane. There were incidents where it's believed that the king gave Jane a locket with an image of himself inside. And then Jane would open and close this in front of Anne, making her furious. Also, allegedly, Anne Boleyn, who was at the time a queen, was furious after she walked in to find Jane Seymour sat on the lap of her husband, and she flew into a fit of rage, and it's believed that this stress and anger may have brought on Anne Boleyn's miscarriage that led to her downfall and subsequent execution. She was considered a gentle and peaceful woman besides this, and Eustace Chapwe said that she was of middling beauty, and but others claimed that she was the fairest of all the king's wives, being a woman of the utmost charm in both character and appearance. Later scandal would mar Henry's wives, but Jane seemed someone who had an unblemished record and reputation. Henry VIII was betrothed to Jane on the 20th of May, 1536, the day after Anne Boleyn lost her head inside the Tower of London, and ten days later, they were married at the Palace of Whitehall. She was given a huge number of manners as a wedding present, and Jane was known for having great sympathy and compassion for Catherine of Aragon, Henry's first wife, and also her daughter Mary, the future Mary I. She tried to get Henry VIII to reconcile with his daughter, but as queen, she was strict and proper. Anne Boleyn's court was marred by huge banquets, dances and frivolity, but Jane instead changed this and made court much more straightforward and less frivolous. She did ask for pardons for the people involved in the pilgrimage of grace protest against Henry, but the king would bite back, reminding Jane of Anne Boleyn's fate when she became involved in matters of state. But Jane would have a first miscarriage around Christmas of 1536, but then got pregnant again very quickly. It was noted that a man was sent to Flanders and Calais to fetch the best quail, as she had a craving for this. But as summer 1537 approached, she had no royal duties and was looked after by the best physicians and midwives in the country. In the September of 1537, she entered her confinement at Hampton Court Palace to await for the arrival of the possible heir. She was attended on by her close ladies-in-waiting and midwives, and she gave birth to a son, named Edward, on the 12th of October 1537 at two o'clock in the morning. Henry VIII was overjoyed by the news, as he now had the son and heir he greatly wanted. And with this, he must have been beaming with his third wife, Jane Seymour. However, the joy would turn to tragedy and heartbreak in a matter of days, as it was clear that Jane's labour was tough and had not gone very well. The baby was not well positioned, and she was in labour for two days and three nights. And following the christening of Edward VI, it was clear that she was seriously ill and in danger. 
in the very rooms that she gave birth to the future king, Jane Seymour, on the 24th of October 1537, died at Hampton Court. It is believed that she died from an infection following birth, which was common. Henry VIII, after hearing this news, ordained the Duke of Norfolk and the treasurer of the household to oversee her burial, and he retired to a solitary and quiet place to mourn his third wife. However, as Jane lay dead in bed, the royal physicians were sought and were fetched to embalm the body of Jane Seymour the Queen, as was in keeping with traditions at the time. However, at the time, the heart and entrails of Jane were removed as part of the embalming process. It was said that, first, the wax chandler did his office, taking out the entrails, was searing, balming, spicing and trammelling in cloth, and then the plumber leaded, soldered, chested, and her entrails were honourably interred in the chapel. Within a few doors of the palace where Jane Seymour died, in the chapel royal of Hampton Court, the physicians and priests would have taken her heart and entrails, which were placed in a lead container. These were then placed into a wooden chest, and they were then interred, allegedly inside the chapel royal, and specifically, it's believed, under the high altar of the royal chapel. This was symbolic for Henry VIII, as the heart of his wife would remain at the centre of his favourite residence and palace, and Jane's good heart would never leave the place where she gave birth to the heir. It's not documented whether any excavation work has taken place near to the altar, and whether this leaden casket was found containing her heart, but the tradition that this has been placed there is still adhered to, and the guides and members of the congregation of the chapel will still mention how beneath the high altar, or next to it, is Jane Seymour's heart. It's unlikely that this will ever be excavated or dug up, as unlike bones, it is possible that her heart and entrails would have decayed, and may just simply be dust today. After the embalming process, Jane's remains would have been wrapped in seer cloth and bound tightly after her cavity would have been filled with herbs and spices, as it was believed that this would best preserve her. She was then taken to Windsor Castle, and specifically the chapel of St George there at the time. She was then buried inside a vault under the choir at the heart of where the Order of the Garter meet, and following her burial there, there was a huge feast in her honour. She is remembered today for being the woman that gave Henry VIII the most infamous Tudor monarch the son that he greatly wanted, and Jane also helped to restore Mary I to her father's affections. She was a good queen, and was a rather modest young woman, but inside of Hampton Court, where she gave birth to the great hope for the Tudor dynasty, she would succumb to the after-effects of her pregnancy. Her heart today is, it's believed, still remaining in the Chapel Royal at Hampton Court Palace. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.